I joined iRacing in December 2021 with absolutely zero experience with racing games. I didn't know any tracks at all. So on my first week when I raced the Mazda MX-5 at Tsukuba, I had an incredible amount of fun learning the track, but it took me quite a long time. And when I raced, my first races were so great that I realized I want to be able to race every week. But that means that I need to be able to learn a track each week and that I need to be able to be consistent and also have a decent pace. And achieving that each week when you're working full time and have other things in life that keep you busy, as I'm sure most of us have, is very challenging. It takes time to prepare. And so already back then I had decided I must find a way to practice efficiently so that I can be race ready every single week even if I have to learn the track from scratch. For months, I did a lot of research, watching practice guides and just trying to gather as much information about how do people practice, as well as finding things that work for me specifically so that I can put together a practice package that gets me up to speed from zero to race pace as quickly as possible. So my goal with this video today is to share my practice routine so that hopefully it helps you as well to get up to speed with a track as quickly as possible. This is obviously aimed more towards uh, beginners, but if you are intermediate or experienced, you might want to stick around to find out if maybe you discover something interesting that maybe might help you. Currently, I'm racing in the Falcon GT4 Challenge, and next week's track is Mid-Ohio. Now, I don't own Mid-Ohio, I have never even looked at the track map of it, so my thought for this week is to take you along with me on uh, a practice session so that I can show you exactly what I do, the tools that I use, and uh, how I get ready for the week. All the links to all the tools mentioned will be in the description. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, in general, remember these overall tips for your practice sessions in general, which can be applied across pretty much all the stages of this routine. One, make sure you take breaks in between sessions. Don't burn yourself out, just do a few laps, take a break, get back to it. I promise you, you will get better more if you take breaks than if you don't. Um, try practicing a little bit every day uh, rather than having super long sessions on one day and then not practicing for like several days in a row. Uh, I find that also that helps very, very much. Set yourself goals for your sessions, uh, whether it's a, a lap time or whether it's keeping a certain level of consistency or uh, staying clean and getting no access. Try and set a goal and work on one specific thing at a time. On that note, when you're driving and you're learning the track, don't focus on everything at once. Do a few laps just practicing your braking. Then do a few laps practicing your turning. Then do a few laps practicing your exits. If you focus on one thing at a time, you will be able to master each one more quickly so that when you put it back all together, it will just flow much better and you will see that your pace will improve dramatically. These are, let's say, some tenets which I think are universal for practicing and that I try to keep in the back of my mind at all times. All right, so I just bought the track and the first thing I'm going to show you is how I set up my practice session to have the optimal conditions for practice. So. First of all, I go to the series list on uh, the iRacing UI. I click on the series that I'm interested in. In my case, the GT4 Falcon Tire Challenge. Um, I go over to schedule and I go to the week that I'm interested in practicing. So next week is week four, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. I click on drive now, it opens up a menu, then I click on test drive. So what this does is it allows you to set up the test driving session using the exact same conditions that you would have on race day. And those are the conditions that you want to get used to so that you can perform optimally on race day. Then, another thing that's crucial at this step is to click on your car and disable car damage. 
The reason why I disable car damage is because at the beginning I'm not going to know the track, which means that I'm gonna wreck quite a lot. So, um, each time that you wreck the car, you have to teleport back to the pits, you have to go, you have to go back out, you have to reheat the tires. It takes time, each time that you wreck, to reheat the tires. So, by disabling car damage, if you wreck, nothing happens to the car, you just get right back on track, your tires are still warm, you just keep practicing and you don't waste any time. The test drive session is loading, I'll see you in the pit lane for a couple more tips about this first phase of practice. Alright, so I'm about to hit a track for the first time ever. My goal with this very first session here at Mid-Ohio and with any other track is to learn the layout of the track. To optimize this first session focused on learning the track layout, I absolutely recommend using a live track map overlay. The one that I use is from Race Lab. So as you can see, I've opened my practice overlay and I've got um, a live track map with turn numbers on the top right side of my screen. I've got a lap time log on the top left side of my screen and I've got telemetry log on the bottom left side of my screen and also using and this is the most important thing using the live track map I can see what corner is coming next so that I can mentally remember easier the layout of the track another tip additional to um, having uh, practice overlays but specifically the live track map is to activate in the iRacing option the pit exit line. The reason why that's useful is because, well, in some tracks it's a bit confusing to understand how to exit the pits and by activating it you will get a nice dotted line which will show you the way out of the pits. That way you can figure out with absolute ease how to leave the pits and you don't have to waste any time trying to figure that out on your own. You can have this line activated during races as well, so there's no loss. Let's go out on track and let's learn the layout of Mid-Ohio. So at first, we're going to focus on just learning the basic sequence of turns and establishing very basic brake markers. I'm not going to go fast at first, I'm going to go slow at first and then I'm slowly going to build up speed. So you can see already that the track map is extremely useful because I know that there's a hairpin coming up here. So I know that I'm gonna have to break hard or I'm gonna smack into the wall. So that's already saved me a bunch of time that if I would have just gone straight into the barrier, right? I can see that next up turn number three is a kink. Very small, quick kink, so I don't have to break at all. Turn number four is a 90 degree turn to the right, so I'm gonna have to break. I'm gonna do that now. And then you can see that we basically did that successfully. And what I'm doing here, oh, and I'm understeering, so I'm just taking it easy. I'm looking as far as possible into corners. So right now, I'm basically looking over the crest of the elevation. We go down, I'm looking at the track map. And I'm basically just alternating, looking at the track map and looking down the track. I'm not really focusing on gears too much. I'm not really focusing on like braking markers too much. We'll get there in due time. For this session, I do not recommend using the racing line. The reason why I don't recommend using the racing line is because if you use it, you're going to be staring at the line right in front of the nose of your car. You don't want that. In this session, you want to try and get used to as much as possible to looking as far as you can into corners. Because if you look far into a corner, you are subconsciously more likely to be able to steer the car into that corner. And that is particularly helpful when you don't know the layout of a track yet, because by looking as far as possible, you can see the turns coming and you can prepare for them. You can do that slowly at the beginning and 
gradually build up speed, but avoid the racing line, look as far as you can. Be conservative with your braking markers during this first session. Don't brake late at each turn, otherwise you're gonna keep going into the grass, into gravel traps, into the barrier, you're gonna waste time. Brake earlier than you feel like braking, and then the same as speed, slowly push your braking point back. To add to that, another reason why I do not recommend using the racing line is because if you learn the layout of the track organically, so basically just by driving it and figuring it out on your own, it's more likely to cementify in your brain and you're more likely to just remember, like, it, it might take a little bit longer to, like, learn it, but once you do, your knowledge of it will be much more solidified than if you rely on a um, racing line. Now, as I start building up speed, I want to start comparing my laps to each other so that I can see where I can gain time and where I'm losing time. And to do this, I activate um, uh, iRacing's uh, Delta feature. So, the one that I'm using now and the one that I use for every single training session is the session best lap comparison. And the reason why I use the session best lap comparison uh, as opposed to comparing to my all-time best lap is because the conditions of your all-time best might be different. And as you can see, we've shaved off another second. And a few laps later, I was able to cut my lap time down to a 129.7. I have already learned and improved a lot on my own at this point, so this is when I decide to move on to session 2 and employ a track guide. As I've mentioned earlier, make sure to take a break in between practice sessions. Take 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. The breaks are important in order to allow your mind to rest and to get used to the information that you have acquired. You will find that if you step away for a little bit and then you come back, you will immediately be able to put down really good laps. After a solid session one and a good break, you will often find that when you start session two, your best time in session one will most likely be your base time in session two. And that'll be the time that no longer that you will be chasing, but that you will be building new speed onto. But all right, let's move on to session two. And all right, everyone, after about 40 minutes of running laps, I have uh, learned the layout of the track. And also I got to a point where I managed to increase my speed as much as I can on my own. But at this point, the most efficient way to continue getting faster is by using external help. And by that, I mean, we're going to use a track guide. Now, the goal for session two is quite simple, building speed. We're going to try to get as close as possible to race pace. Now, you might ask, how do you define what your race pace should be? All right, everyone. So the first tool that I usually look at to figure out what pace I should be aiming for is called the simracingstats.com. So on simracingstats.com, you can find all kinds of information about the various uh, series which run on iRacing. So it's a very interesting website to know regardless of whether you're using it for training or not. But what we're here for is to figure out what are the guys at our level, so in my case right now is a 1.9 KI rating, what are the guys at our I rating level doing in terms of pace? So uh, we're going to look for um, the GT4 Falcon Tire Challenge fixed, and then we're looking for the track that we're practicing, which is mid-Ohio, here it is. Uh, and now you can see that here on top, there is a lap time I rating slider, and you wanna put this down to your level to figure out what the pace 
is at your level. So you can see apparently a 1.9k fast lap is a 128.337. And now remember, in the first 40 minutes of session one, I managed to achieve a 129.7. So I'm about a second and a half off of the 1.9k fast lap pace. So that was already a pretty successful session one. We can also see that the 1.9k average lap is a 130.246. So this is going to give session two a goal. We're trying to get as close as possible to a 128.3. Here, you can even look at some uh, uh, some splits, some races that went uh, official. So, for example, uh, I want to now look at an official race around the 1.9k uh, strength of field mark. So, let's look for that. And as you can see, it sends us to the iRacing website. And now I can look at what times these guys were doing. Once we have a target pace, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for a track guide to find extra time that we were not able to find during session one. It'll take much less time than if we have to figure out all of that on our own, of course. All right, everyone. So I'm on YouTube. I'm going to look for a track guide for my specific car and track combination. And there we have it, everyone. I've got myself a track guide. Now, this channel called The Racing Line is absolutely great for track guide. It's been super useful for the GT4 series. If you're racing Formula 3 or Formula 4, I highly recommend Tony Dibden. His channel is TDI99. Absolutely great guides. Um, I did all my F4 and F3 track learning using his guides but many of you might also be new to iRacing and you might be driving the Mazda and uh, I find that Dave Cam has absolutely great uh, track guides for the rookie Mazda. To be as efficient as possible while watching the track guide I take notes on a post-it note. This is what my uh, notes uh, look like uh, if you can see that. You'll see, I'll write down the turn numbers, I'll write down uh, things like uh, braking markers and things like this. I keep it nice and simple. You don't want to make this overwhelming and have too much information because you're gonna wanna, like I'm gonna stick this underneath my racing monitor so that I can quickly take a glance at it uh, while I'm driving for a quick reference. And uh, this is going to help me store all the important information so that I don't have to rewatch this track guide like four or five or six times or whatever. My suggestion is to keep your notes as simple as possible so that you can gather all the information that you need at a quick glance. I don't even write uh, information about every corner in my post-it. I mostly just write information about corners uh, where I know that I can still gain a lot of speed. But, but the corners that I'm already doing well on my own after session one, um, yeah, those are fine. And that's actually the benefit of doing session one organically. The benefit of doing that is that if you just put 30 minutes to an hour just learning the track layout on your own with no assistance, once you watch the track guide, you can watch the track guide in a much more uh, focused way, perhaps focusing on corners that you're struggling with um, and you will be already quite familiar with the way that the track feels like. On the other hand, if you watch the track guide immediately and then you go out on track, you're gonna have to focus on every single bit of information that the presenter of the track guide is giving you because you're gonna need all of it because you haven't figured out any of it on your own. So. This is why it's so extremely important that, at least uh, for my trading regime, that I do session one just on my own, just figuring things out on my own for 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the complexity of the track. I'm going to finish watching this, I'm going to finish making my notes, and then I'm going to head back out on track 
and see if I can improve my lap time. And obviously, if you truly want to master a track, it's going to take hundreds, uh, thousands of laps. But we're busy people and we don't have time for that. We're trying to achieve our pace in an efficient way. As I got back on track, I did a total of 25 laps to start with. And at the beginning, I don't focus on everything at once. Initially, I focus on braking. Then, a couple laps later, I focus on my uh, turn-ins. Then, a few laps after that, I focus on my exits. Eventually, as I get into the session, I start combining all of that together, everything that I've learned together. And in fact, as you can see, towards the end of uh, the stint that I hit uh, laps very close to the 1.9k fast lap in green three times very close to each other. In the meantime, throughout the whole session, I've hit several times lap times that are about a second faster than the 1.9k average lap, which are marked in orange. I have a strong basis to work with here. The more I practice, the more I am consistently hitting laps which are close to my target. All right, so at this point, I'm about an hour and a half into my practice routine. I've established a semi-solid basis of consistency around a 129 flat, and I've even managed to hit my desired lap time, which is a 128.5, a couple of times. Now, towards this final part of session two, I try and find that extra half a second of consistency in my regular laps. I want to try and bring my baseline lap as close to my uh, goal lap as much as possible. Now, having done about 30 laps, I know where I am losing time. There's a section on this track where I tend to make a mistake, and it's the S's. As such, I would like to focus, at this stage, on practicing specifically that segment of the track. And fortunately, recently, iRacing released the Active Reset feature, which allows you to pick a segment of the track and practice it over and over and over again. And this is a game changer because it saves you a huge amount of time. And this is how you set it up. So you're going to want to go to your options. You want to go over to controls and under other controls, you uh, have to look for active reset save start point. Uh, map that to a button on your wheel and then active reset run, ma map that as well. So the active reset start point, um, you click that at the point where you want your section to start. Then, when you hit Active Reset Run, you will set the end of the, sec of the section, and then you will teleport back to the start point. Let me show you how that works in practice. I want to set my custom sector from turn 4 to turn 9. So, I'm on the straight towards turn 4. This is a perfect place to start my custom sector. You might have heard that sound, that means that the marker is down. Now, I will go through this section. On the right, we're at turn number 7, we're almost at the end of our desired custom sector. We're gonna go around turn 9, okay. Now I'm gonna hit the end of the sector, go back to the start point, and there I am. As you can see, I'm back at turn 4, and now I can practice this section, which is the section where I'm losing time, over and over again. Now, one trick. Um, if you hold the go back to start point button, it freezes the car so that you have a moment to put your foot back down on the pedal and hold the steering wheel before the car takes off. And now I'm gonna release the button. And there I am. Once I feel uh, comfortable uh, with my drive in this section and I notice uh, uh, consistency and an improvement, 
uh, I go back to practicing entire laps and I guarantee that you will see that your times will improve dramatically at that point. After doing that exercise for a few minutes, I went back out on lap, I did another 10 laps, and as you can see, I hit 128s much more consistently, and even managed to hit a 128 flat and lower my lap times on average, even just with 10 more laps. And alright, so at this point, I'm a couple of hours in, in my training routine, on a track that I had never driven on before. I got my pace where I want it to be, I got my consistency where I want it to be, both can still improve, however, I have not made any major mistakes over the past 15 or 20 laps that I've run, and um, this is the point where I can close session two and where I feel comfortable joining official races. For many of us, sim racing time each week is limited. We're not trying to become professionals, so it's important that we leave time to race because you also learn so many more things while you're racing. So in many cases, my training routine ends here and it's time to race. But what if I want to go the extra mile? What if I want to find an extra two or three tenths of pace? If you have the time for that and you're curious, stick around because now we're going to enter session three and session four. Both of these sessions are about refining our pace and trying to go a little bit faster, learning a little bit more about the track and also making sure that we practice alternate lines so that we can be as consistent as possible on race day. Alright guys, so in session 3 we're going to try and chase a few more tenths of lap time. Um, in order to do this we're going to use a tool called VRS which stands for Virtual Racing School which is a website with a ton of sim racing resources but what we're interested in is the telemetry logger to record our lap times and then we're going to compare our lap times to lap times by the virtual racing school uh, coaches. This is going to show me in a very clear way where I am losing the most time. This VRS comparison tool is free for a total of four hours a week. If you want to use it for more than four hours a week, you're going to have to buy uh, a monthly subscription. But so, First thing you want to do is go over to the website of the virtual racing school and then make an account, open your account tab and download the telemetry logger. So you're going to want to download it and install it. Once you've downloaded and installed the telemetry logger, it's going to sit in tray um, in the bottom right side of your taskbar. Then you're going to want to open it. You're gonna wanna open the telemetry logger and enable uh, telemetry recording. So as you can see, we've got a green light and right now it's uh, recording our uh, telemetry. So then uh, let's, let's launch on a racing uh, test session and uh, do normal practice laps and then we'll be back um, in the VRS uh, website to show you how you can compare your laps to those of VRS coaches and find more information that could help you go a bit faster. Okay, so I've done four laps using the telemetry logger. Now I'm going to pick one of these four laps. I will most likely pick the lap that is most representative of my overall pace uh, and the line that I would usually take around the track. And uh, I will compare it to uh, a VRS uh, driver. You have to log in and uh, click on the home page. Then, uh, under latest opportunities, here you will see uh, your most recent session. Go to view my session. 
Here you will see the overview of your session. So make sure it's the right date and the right track and the right car and everything. Um, click on Analyze Session. Now, on the right side, the comparison session in red, you have to input your lap. So it's I'm the driver, uh, 2023 season two, McLaren GT4, this is all already selected. Here I have to select the lap that I want to compare to the uh, VRS driver. So out of these laps, I will pick the one that I am most likely to uh, replicate, let's say, or my most usual lap, which should be the 28.4. Now on the left at the target session, we're going to pick the lap from the VRS driver. So we're going to click on data packs. Then in select a driver, you will have to look for your series. So in this case, it's the uh, GT4 series. So I'm scrolling down. Here it is, GT4 Falcon Tire Challenge, and we're driving the McLaren 570S GT4. So I will pick this uh, gentleman here, uh, the first one. Uh, select a session. So we're just going to select the session that he did um, a few days ago. And now we're going to select a lap from the session. Now, this man obviously is extremely quick. He's doing 126s and I think that's a bit unrealistic to try a name for that. But I managed to do a 27.9. So why not pick this lap, the 27.4? I'm sure that I can learn quite a bit from comparing it to that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you get four free hours a week of this comparison tool. Otherwise, you have to pay. Um, so as you can see here, you can start your weekly free access. And from this point onwards, we've got four hours of free VRS. We're not going to need that much because I can take screenshots or anyway, I can learn from this and store the memory either in my brain or write some notes. So, uh, already at the top here, you can see uh, where you're losing the most time. So I am losing the most time in uh, turns 12 and, thir and 13. So that would be right at the end of the lap. Usually what I do is I will focus on uh, the part of the track that I'm losing the most time on. When you click on a specific turn, you can see all kinds of different comparison. Uh, at the top, you can see a uh, speed comparison. So uh, I am red, uh, he is blue, and you can see that he's carrying a lot more speed into the turn. Um, you can compare uh, lines here, for example, line distance. You can see that uh, I'm quite a bit of line um, in the middle of the corner. So you can move this slider around. You can see the blue slider, you can move that around. And um, you can see uh, here, on uh, the picture of the track, you can see where that corresponds um, on track. And uh, this is extremely useful because I can also see when he's getting back on the throttle. So he's getting back on the throttle quite a bit earlier than I am here. Uh, and I can also see how hard he's braking. So as you can see, if you look at the red dotted line here, I am braking way harder than he is. So basically I'm braking harder and I am getting on the throttle um, later. So I already know that I can brake a little bit less and a little bit earlier and that I can start accelerating a little bit earlier. Now, without looking at this, I wouldn't have known any of this information. I could make a whole video based just on VRS. Uh, so this is just a, a small taste of what this can do. But um, it's not too hard to read this information. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. But if I figured it out, anybody can. And similarly to this analysis of turns 12 and 13, I can analyze all other turns. Also, if you look um, on the left here, you can compare your line to, uh, to the um, VRS driver's line. So his line is in blue, my line is in red. 
and uh, as you can see, he goes quite a bit wider um, on uh, the uh, middle part of the corner, and then he apexes late, and then he drives the car much wider out onto the right before getting back on the straight. If I uh, go uh, back to the beginning of the corner, by clicking on, uh, you see here, uh, using my uh, using the blue line, I'm going back to the like turn-in point, and I can see exactly how much is turning in. So as you can see from here, look at that. He turns in quite a bit earlier than I do at this point. As you can see, my steering wheel, which is the red input, is basically straight, and his steering wheel, which is the blue input, is already turning quite a bit. But look at that. He is braking a lot less than I am. So that's all very interesting stuff. Now I know, and I can go back out and track and practice this, that I have to turn earlier, brake less, and then uh, drive out a bit wider than I do, and then get back on the gas earlier. This is all extremely useful information, which I have found out in like five minutes and using just like four laps. So yeah, this takes a little bit of getting used to reading this information, but as soon as you get handy with this, you will find that you'll be able to find some time quite easily. So yeah, if you find yourself having some spare time and you want to finesse your lap time, Get on VRS is an amazing free tool. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next session, session four, which is all about racecraft and alternative lines. All right, so you've made it this far. We're now on the final session of my training routine. The final session of my training routine is focused on two things, racecraft and alternative lines. Racecraft is your ability to drive side by side with other cars in a safe way and doing overtakes and passes safely. Alternative lines, uh, well, you know, when we practice, we've been practicing uh, driving the optimal racing line, which is the shortest line through each corner, um, simply put. However, that's not realistically going to happen during the races, uh, at least not constantly, because as there are other cars on track, you're going to be driving side by side and you're going to be taking the inside line and the outside line occasionally through uh, some corners. So it pays off to get used uh, to driving the alternative lines, because if you don't, you might break too early, you might break too late, you might oversteer on entry, you might understeer into a car. The most efficient way to practice both racecraft and alternative lines is to do AI racing. Because against the AI, you will be able to do both with zero risk. If you wreck, you can just reset the session, go back to the start, try again. You can try your strategy through turn one 10 times on repeat so that when you're in the real thing, you will be much more comfortable being surrounded by cars and you will not make as many mistakes because of nerves. So to set up um, an AI race, you go to your iRacing UI, you click on AI Racing, single race, uh, you uh, select the track, you select uh, what type of start you want, um, what car you want to use, uh, if you want uh, tire changes and this kind of stuff, um, the weather and the conditions, if you want a qualifying session or just go straight into a race, how many AI opponents, what cars to drive, how strong they are, um, the track conditions and the time of the day. Once uh, you input all the conditions that you prefer, fire it up, have yourself a race against the AI, and you will see that you will basically be forced to drive alternate lines, and obviously you will be surrounded by cars. If you make them a little bit slower than you, you can practice overtaking, you can practice driving a wheel to wheel, um, and Against the AI, there is a very 
very handy option if you wreck uh, you just basically reset and you can rewind to the beginning of the race so you can basically just do them on repeat without uh, doing the setup uh, again you only have to do this once obviously another option that you have is joining the uh, open practice sessions I am sure uh, you know how to do that by now but uh, yeah you just go to uh, up next and uh, you can simply join uh, here GT4 uh, Falcon fixed well looks like I'm gonna have uh, to do an update but uh, normally you can just join the session uh, through the uh, iRacing UI and that will allow you to compare your lap times to other drivers and also will help you uh, get used to driving in traffic. However, um, you will get into more traffic in the AI races, you will do more overtakes in the AI races, you will be driving alternative lines more during AI races and that's why I think that AI races are much more efficient to practice these two things. Similar to what I do in session 4 which is AI racing, there is another tip which is similar to AI racing but instead will put you into a real race only that you'll be a ghost and other drivers will not know that you're there but you'll be able to race on track with them and you'll be able to compare yourself to them and to see uh, what the pace is and what's happening on track and this is called ghost racing and this is how you do that so you go to your racing list i will pick the formula d series and what you do as you can see there is a race starting at 11 45 pm which is in uh, just under a minute and uh, you're gonna have to wait until the session actually starts so the session is going to start in a minute, so I'll be back with you as soon as the session uh, is started. And that's it. The session has gone live. As you can see, there are um, five splits uh, here at 11.45 p.m. So you can pick any of those five splits. I would recommend picking a split which is uh, representative of where you would normally end up. I usually am either in the top split, uh, being one of the weaker drivers, or in the middle split, being uh, average to one of the top drivers. Um, so I'll pick uh, one of the splits in the middle. Uh, I'll pick here the second split. You hit watch. The session is loading, and now I can join. And there you have it. As you can see, I'm on track and cars are driving right through me. And this is such an underrated and quite unknown uh, practice tip. Um, and uh, it's super useful to practice uh, driving alongside other cars. It's super useful to practice uh, your pace. It's also very useful to learn from other drivers to see how others drive and uh, how they might be uh, taking lines uh, different than you. And uh, yeah, all this good stuff. And with that, guys, we've come to the end of this practice guide. I hope that you found my routine insightful and that hopefully you learned something. If you're a beginner and you're just getting started with iRacing, I highly, highly recommend finding a flow that works for you. And hopefully you will have found something that you can implement and that can allow you to learn tracks as quickly as possible so that you can race as much as possible which is the most at least in my opinion the most fun part about sim racing of course i know that this was a lot of information but i tried to make this guide as comprehensive as possible for you and um if you struggle to remember everything don't worry just look at the timestamps underneath and just make sure to hit the uh, recap areas so that you can have just a one pager with the tips for each session summarized and uh, yeah if you found this useful please consider liking please consider subscribing my name is lorenzo on this channel i share my love and passion for sim racing with all of you hopefully i'll see you in my next video and as always take care and hopefully see you on track bye guys